Meanwhile, here's another geopolitical battleground, the Pacific island nation of Vanuatu, a country made up of about 80 islands. They house around 319,000 people. And this island nation, like others in the region, is caught in a tussle between the U.S. and China. We'll start with the latest development. The U.S. plans to open an embassy in Vanuatu. This was confirmed by the U.S. State Department, and this is another move to counter China, to limit China's growing influence in the Pacific. So far, the U.S. had a, had a representative, not in Vanuatu, but in a country nearby, in the island nation of New Guinea. But now the Americans will set up a new embassy dedicated to Vanuatu, and this marks an important shift. It shows that America is serious about holding on to its influence in the region. Historically, Washington viewed the Pacific as its backyard. It has defense agreements with most of these island nations. And these agreements give the Americans exclusive rights. They can navigate through certain parts of the Pacific. Now look at this map closely and you'll understand. You'll see that these islands are closer to Asia and Australia than to the U.S. So how does the U.S. dominate the region? With the help of military bases, the Americans have a naval base in Guam. What is Guam? For all intents and purposes, Guam is an American colony in the Pacific. It sits on a vantage point. It has a strategic location, and this helps the U.S. extend influence over the Pacific Islands. Also, it brings the Americans within striking distance of China, and China is very aware of that fact. So over the years, China has tried to wean away these islands from the U.S. It uses money threats and bribery and everything in between to sway the islands. And China's moves have been working. Case in point, the Solomon Islands. That's another Pacific country. In 2019, it officially established diplomatic relations with China. And by 2022, it had signed a draft security pact with China. Beijing has also been pumping in millions into the island nation. It has been sen sending companies like Huawei to build telecom infrastructure. That standard Chinese debt trap diplomacy. And the result is this. Last August, the Solomon Islands did not let an American and British ship dock at their ports. This was a clear sign of shifting allegiances. The U.S. has woken up to the danger. It reopened its embassy in the Solomon Islands earlier this year. This was done after a gap of about 30 years. And this is what the White House had to say about it. So I'm here to discuss with the president and other members of his, his team our desire to um, maintain close relations um, with the Solomons. We've quietly underscored that there are a few areas that we would have concerns by if, for instance, the Solomons chose to work in a manner that would encourage or support um, military power projection in the region. We think those steps would be unwelcome, uh, not just to the United States, but for other countries in the Indo-Pacific. So look, our um, we, we're, we're working closely. We're working closely with all the countries in the Pacific. We recognize the challenges, but we're here to continue dialogue. Coming back to Vanuatu, a similar game is being played on the island. China and the U.S. are trying to one-up each other. Biden has promised millions to the entire region. This includes Vanuatu and other nations like the Marshall Islands and Micronesia. A key part of the funding is to fight the impacts of climate change. Because Vanuatu, like most Pacific Island nations, is extremely vulnerable to climate change. It recently faced multiple cyclones, and China was quick to open its checkbook. We express our sincere sympathies to Vanuatu for the recent back-to-back -back cyclones and other disasters it experienced and the serious financial loss it has endured. Foreign Minister Chin Gang sent a message of sympathies to Foreign Minister Jotham Napat soon after the disaster struck. The Red Cross Society of China has provided $100,000 in emergency humanitarian cash assistance to Vanuatu. That was from early March. And now Washington is opening an embassy in Vanuatu. It's likely to prevent a Solomon Islands-like situation and to stay a step ahead of Beijing. Whatever happens next, one thing is clear. The Pacific Island nations are now caught up in the U.S.-China rivalry. In the short term, they will get money and courtship from both sides. But in the long term, they may come to miss their old obscurity.